In a previous video, we went over all of the things needed for Mass, and I forgot to mention one thing. You need the priest humbly here before you. I am ready to celebrate the Mass, and I would show you uh, the things that the priest wears. We talked about all the special names for all the instruments used in the celebration of Mass and the importance that they have. Uh, the clothes that a priest wears uh, is important too. In the Old Testament, in the book of Levit Leviticus especially, it goes into great detail about the clothes that the, the priests of the Old Testament are to wear. In the New Testament, of course, the one priest is Jesus Christ, who celebrates the Mass, uh, which is a representation of his offering, his sacrifice at Calvary. He himself is the priest, he himself is the altar, and he himself is the offering, the sacrifice. He operates in all those roles, but sacramentally he does that through the ministrations of a validly ordained priest, which I am happy to report that I am. And so, the clothes that the priest wears are not essential in the sense of the validity of the sacrament. What's necessary? Bread, wine, water, and a priest. That's all that's necessary. What's added on is to be a sign of uh, what's going on on a deeper level than what we can see with our own eyes. For the sake of lyseity, which is the word to be licit, uh, a priest must wear the following clothes. The first thing is called an amice. An amice is, uh, comes from the Latin word for friend, and it's also a word for helmet. It's a, it's a kind of a descendant of what a military person might wear. But it, it's a, a friend in battle. If you imagine you're in battle and you would get hit in the head with some projectile, you would want a helmet, right? So this is our helmet of salvation. There's prayers uh, that can be accompanied when the priest vests during each part, which we can show you later on in the video. So the amice is to cover uh, the, the neck area of the priest's street clothes. If you think of it, this looks funny and it looks like it, whatever. These are just street clothes. It's a specific type of street clothes. But this is a street clothes reality. When, we, when the priest puts his vestments on, he's revealing that it is him celebrating the Mass, but it's ultimately Jesus celebrating the Mass through his works. And so there's something different when you see a priest walking down the hallway versus a priest in the actual celebration of the Mass. This is the beginning of the covering of the street clothes, and it's called an amice. This is called a elb, an elb. Elb comes from the Latin word albus, just means white. It's something white, which symbolizes primarily in its color our baptismal uh, purity that St. Paul says we are clothed in Christ. This is the liturgical vestment that we wore on our baptismal day. Anyone can wear an elb that's been baptized to be clothed in white to represent the purity of our soul after receiving the cleansing waters of baptism, and then after we get our elb a little dirty, we get it rewashed by the blood of Christ in the sacrament of confession. It's also why uh, a girl, especially, would wear white on her day of First Communion, and it's also why a woman would wear white on her wedding day. Sometimes there's a, a misconception that it's just about some sort of physical purity. That's false. It's the baptismal gown, which is white after having received the sacrament of confession is the day of the baptism. So. Don't let those uh, common myths about wedding dresses affect you in your own spiritual life. It's your baptismal garment, which is being clothed with Christ, which is white because of his purity, not because of our purity, that he washes us in his blood whiter than the fuller's lie, the prophet says. Okay. The next thing is called a cincture. A cincture is a belt is around the waist, and it represents uh, chastity. The priest, uh, most priests make vows of celibacy, uh, all priests are called to chastity, and this is a, a reminder of the chastity of Christ, who didn't give himself to one woman, he gives himself to the bride of Christ, and so this belt around our waist is a symbol of our chastity. The next uh, piece of clothing is called a stole. A stole is worn, even in some societies, uh, by civic authorities to represent authority. When the stole goes on, you know that the priest has authority, not because of himself, thank God, but because of Jesus Christ. The authority of Christ is put on over it, and it's tucked into the sanctuary usually, uh, so the priestly power is contained. And over all things, St. Paul says, put on love. As I mentioned before, we are clothed in Christ, and this uh, chasuble, which is a hard word, you can say the word with me, chasuble, chasuble, very good, you can call it vestments, properly speaking. This isn't a robe, so you shouldn't call it a robe, it is a chasuble. Or if you want to use a Latin word, uh, vestment, vesture. Uh, but chasuble is the most correct. The chasuble is, represents charity, that even over the power 
of uh, the priest that he has and the authority of Christ over all things he puts on the mantle of charity that uh, it's Christ who celebrates the Mass and he does it in love for us. So these are the things that a priest wears. Uh, in olden days there was a sweat rag <laughs> uh, called a maniple that became a liturgical vestment uh, that was worn in older days so that's another thing that a priest could wear. Um, and then uh, sometimes during Mass he would wear a beretta, which I forgot mine in my room, but a beretta is a little hat that he could wear when he's celebrating Mass and choir. The bishop's hat called the zucchetto, which means like a small zoo, a pumpkin, because it looks like a little pumpkin with a little thing on the top. Um, and there's other things that a bishop wears. A bishop under his chasuble would wear a pectoral cross, a pectoral means chest, uh, and a cross underneath. He also has his crozier and his mitre. Uh, and then a, a shorter alb that you might see a server wearing, or a priest at a different thing, not mass, is called a surplus. A surplus, not a surplus. Surplus, which is just a shorter, more convenient form of the L that's worn over a cassock, which is not a dress. <laughs> so it's hard to keep track of all these things. Uh, the cassock is just street clothes, uh, but it's in the form of uh, more of a robe uh, than uh, the pants and shirt, kind of more commonly worn today. So these are some of the things that we wear. There's always a little more trivia that we could find, but uh, next time you're saying, or next time you're attending Mass, Try to, try to, in your head, say, what are the things the priest is wearing called again? Then you can rewatch this video or Google it to say, next time I talk to anyone about things, I can say the right words, which is a fun thing to help us all communicate, uh, but more deeply, obviously, to understand the symbolism that each of these things provide, uh, to see charity, to see power, to see our baptismal purity, uh, all in the person of the priest who stands offering the sacrifice of the Mass uh, in the person of Christ. Father, it's time to say the Mass. Alright, here we go.